What's up my friends, I'm Harv, I'm a videographer and on this channel I make videos about videography. In this video I'm checking out the Deity D4 and this is the flagship from their kind of on-camera shotgun mic style category. At around $100, pounds, euros at the time of filming, could this be the most pro sounding mic of this style right now? As ever, I've timestamped everything so you can just skip to the bit you want. Now, my too long didn't watch opinion of the D4 is it's a really cool product that's absurd value and I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to give this away to one of my Patreon backers. The idea with my Patreon is it's non-profit so any funds from Patreon go back into the channel to buy gear, I review it and then I give it away to my backers. So if this channel helps you, if you find it helpful, do check it out. It's inexpensive, it's the cost of I think a cup of coffee. So. So the D4 is an on-camera microphone with a super cardioid condenser capsule that captures a frequency range of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Throughout this video, let's keep the context that this is a budget-friendly product. It's also battery-powered, which uses a single AAA battery that lasts 56 hours. It switches on and off when you turn your camera on and off, so that's a nice battery-saving feature that all microphones of this type should have as standard, and these days I wouldn't buy one that didn't have this. Taking a look in the box, and there are a few interesting things that you get with this. Firstly, I noted there aren't instructions, and I applaud this. It's a simple product to use, obviously, but if you do need to check the instructions, you can just go on Deity's website. So you get this really nice dead cat sleeve, which fits over the pop screen. You get three cables. The D4 has lots of connectivity options, so you do need these cables. It comes with a battery, which I like. It's just nice to have that ready to go. You can just pop it in and get recording. And then there's the unit itself, and it's nice. The foam pop shield, I really like the design of this, and I was immediately struck by the lovely gain knob on the end. The cold shoe mount you can actually unscrew a little bit and shift along leaving space for other accessories on this kind of rail design that they've got. Actually what fits really perfectly is a wireless transmitter from say the Deity pocket wireless system which I reviewed previously and that is an awesome thing. The D4 is pretty connectable obviously to your camera but also to uh, smartphones, laptops, tablets, that kind of thing using their smart port cable which to me looks look a lot like a uh, USB-C or something. A really nice thing this has is a stepless gain knob which has a range of minus 5 dB to plus 10 dB. So effectively it's a pad and a boost in one dial. Very cool. One thing I noticed is the D4 doesn't have a low cut filter for sort of cutting out any of those super low frequencies that you might not want on your recording. Not a huge deal for me personally because usually I like to record you know full the full frequency and I can EQ anything out later. It's also worth noting that the D4 as I briefly touched on, starts recording bass frequencies at around 50 hertz, which is deep, sort of, but not earth-shatteringly deep. So maybe the omission of a low-cut filter was intentional from Deity because, you know, because it's not capturing the super sub-frequencies anyway and they felt like it wasn't necessary. Hmm, don't know. Anyway, now let me show you how it sounds. Okay, now I've got, you can probably just see the edge of the D4 uh, poking into the frame. I'm gonna just see what it's like if I angle this up and then we can check to see what the rejection is like on the sides. Angling it up now, it probably just sounds like the room. Um, this kind of thing will be really um, 
amplified if you add you know if you add too much compression for example that will bring up the kind of the ambient level in your room so there we go good see now as you can see i've got the d4 uh with the dead cat on and i'm just going to blow on it and see uh see to what degree it can reduce that kind of wind noise so here goes and then when i take the dead cat off now we've just got the um, the pop shield on. Let's just see what that sounds like. If I so this is this is really just for um, minimising plosives. So and then without the foam pop filter, compared to plosives, it's probably distorting like anything. Next onto build quality, and this is one area where I feel like the D4 could be best in class uh, for its price. And here's why. Firstly. I love its aluminium construction. It's just, it feels really sturdy, but also lightweight. That's aluminium for you. Secondly, it has a kind of a matte finish and this is really nice, but I suppose it could be chipped after a while, but um, you know, at a hundred pounds, I'm not too worried about that. The gain dial on the end is just beautifully dampened and really just gives the feeling of high quality. One other cool thing is that there's this kind of rail system that's attached to the shock mount and it lets you change the position of the cold shoe mount. And that's cool because you could mount it, shift it forward and then add something like this. This is, this is the Deity uh, pocket wireless system. Clip it on there, plug it in and then you've got a wireless condenser microphone. Really cool. The foam pop filter you get with it is also really nice quality. It just slots on really easily and just stays there. It's not it's not coming off easily. And that's, I think, thanks to this new uh, rubber ring design. It also comes with a, a dead cat attachment, which is more like a dead cat bag. And that kind of just slots over here. And then it has kind of like a little uh, a drawstring here to attach it and this system just works really nicely. Uh, it's nicely designed and it all works. Next, we move on to user experience. And obviously this only has one dial and that's gorgeous to use. And there's no other controls, so it's not cluttered at all. So all ticks so far. What I care about more, however, is how it sounds straight out of camera. You know, how much work is needed in in editing to get it sounding its best. Does it need much EQ? Does it need much compression? These things can be a deal breaker for me when buying a microphone as I'm, I'm from a, an audio background originally. So let's take a look at that now. So now I've got the D4 set up on my camera. It's kind of arm's length. I can just about touch the end of it here. And I don't have the pop filter on or the, um, the dead cat, obviously, because I don't need it. I'm inside. Can you hear room tone? I've got the window open. You might be able to hear birds chirping. You might be able to hear the whir of my computer just down here. What does it sound like? And then what if I add processing? What if I add EQ and compression? How does it sound? I'm gonna add it now. And what do you think? Usually I add a little bit of top end if it needs it. I usually add a, a low pass filter so that I can uh, cut out some of the low frequencies and usually I do some tweaking of the mid-range just to kind of scoop out any anything that I don't like the sound of basically then that's that's called surgical EQ reduction basically and um, I don't know does it sound good? Well hey I just sat down in a quite a busy cafe um, and I'm not a vlogger by the way and I just wanted to see real world um, how real world example of how it would reject the sound of the room and focus on the sound of my voice. So, I don't know, has it worked? So what about the alternatives? Well, there are a veritable sea of alternatives to choose from, each trying to sort of poke their head above the water. Perhaps I'm belaboring the metaphor a little bit, but you get the point. I'll link to a load of good options in the description box below. Just know that it's pretty hard to go wrong. All of them offer pretty exceptional value and all sound pretty good. Next, it's time for the pros and the cons. And as I'm a glass half full kind of guy, I'll start with the pros. Let's do it. Firstly, the sound quality. I've always liked the Deity sound. It doesn't have a huge amount of color. It stays fairly flat and neutral and that lends itself well to post-processing and that's what I like. 
The build is quite special for a microphone of this price, especially that awesome gain dial. The rail mount system is a pretty genius idea, one that I know I'm going to be using a lot in the future. It comes with an excellent pop filter and dead cat system, really some of the best that I've seen for this class of microphone. It's got great connectivity, your camera, your phone, your laptop, your tablet. It has auto on off, but then I expect auto on off. Overall, this is exceptional value like every single product that I've ever used from Deity. What's not to like? And then the cons, and as I mentioned, it doesn't have a low cut slash high pass filter. It also doesn't have a low battery indicator. These are not big things, just small niggles really. Finally, to my opinion, and I don't know to what degree I can in good conscience criticize this microphone when it offers so much for a relatively sensible price. Sure, it doesn't have a low cut filter, which some people may miss, but you know, listening to my recordings, I didn't feel like I really needed to cut out much bass anyway, so yeah. A bigger deal for me is no kind of battery life indicator. Maybe maybe a small series of LEDs might have been nice just across the barrel, just, you know, telling me how much was left. I assume that when I get down to a really low point, maybe the LED colour, there's a tiny green one on there, maybe that colour might change? I'm not sure. But really, it's just that kind of, it's the niggling, paranoid feeling that, you know, once you've used it for a bit, you don't know how much is left. So these are just nitpicky things, really. If Deity had added the low cut filter and the battery indicator, you know, it, it adds a little bit of cost for sure. And probably, you know, it'll look a little bit more cluttered on the barrel. So, you know, swings and roundabouts there. So overall, it's a mic that I really like. It sounds good. It's got some really slick design elements. It doesn't cost a lot of cash, uh, you know? It's just, it's just, it's a good product. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. My question of the day for you is this. Which microphone, which on-camera microphone do you think offers the very best in terms of price to quality ratio, considering those two things? So let me know in the comments section below. There's a good chance I go down there and go, ooh and um, go on a spending spree and uh, you know, there'll be a load more microphone reviews coming your way. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about videography of which YouTube has recommended this one for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.